Here's an introduction to calculus. So many people have asked me for this. We start with a line and there's nothing really interesting about a line except for how steep it is, is the slope. We'll pick a point X1, Y1. We'll pick another point X2, Y2. How much did we rise and how much did we run? We now have a valid way to measure the steepness rise over run. This rise is whatever the height of this point is minus the height of this point. That's Y2 minus Y1. And this run is however far over this point is minus however far this point is. So that's X2 minus X1. This is the equation of a line Y equals MX plus B. And this is a great way to work with lines. But if we want to get more complicated, let's change this into function notation into an F of X. It works the exact same way. We plug x1 into it and it outputs this y1, but instead it's going to be called f of x1. And when we plug in x2, we're going to have an output of f of x2. And we can also change our slope. Instead of y sub 2, let's make it f of x sub 2 minus f of x sub 1. So it's the exact same thing. We're measuring the rise over run, but we're using function notation instead. The reason function notation is so helpful is we can now do things that aren't lines. And now that we're not dealing with straight lines anymore, it's no longer called a slope. It's an average rate of change. That's on average, how much do we change going from this point to this point? This seems kind of weird. We say rise over run, but now it's going down and up. So let's look at it this way. Let's connect our two points, get rid of the rise over run. The slope of this segment is going to be our average rate of change. And as the graph changes, you can see that this average rate of change will also change. If we extend this segment out, it gives us a line. And the name of this line is the secant line. And this formula that gives us the average rate of change, it's also going to give us the slope of that secant line. On the x-axis, let's call this below the point x, which would make this an x right here and this would be f of x and then we can change this to x and this can be changed to f of x from our point x let's move over a certain distance h that will make this dash mark here x plus h which would then make this x2 and x plus h and this f of x2 and f of x plus h and we can change them over here this positive x and this negative x are going to cancel so we just have an h on bottom let's move this down here but let's start to move this point closer to this point so our h is going to start getting smaller let's go all the way till h gets to zero. And the way we write that in our formula is we write the limit as h approaches zero. And we're going to keep shrinking the h and getting the points closer and closer together until we get to h equals zero. And now that we're here at h equals zero, that means there's only one point. This line is no longer called a secant line. It's called a tangent line. And this point is called the point of tangency. So this is no longer an average rate of change because there's no two points for it to be an average for. This is an instantaneous rate of change. It's how fast it's changing at that instant. Another name we have for this is the derivative. So why did we make this a limit? Why don't we just say h is zero? Because if we made h zero, that would make this division by zero and we can't do division by zero. So this is the magic of calculus. Continue watching to see it work. As this moves around, we can find the slope of the tangent line for all of these points. Well, let's do a specific example. Let's look at the parabola y equals x squared. 